Spiritual warfare and subjects such as Satan and demons is tremendously controversial, but I would say highly important because Satan and demons are real and they attack God's people. The question is, how do we respond? I was privileged to answer that question in a lengthy lecture that I gave for some of the leaders of our church. Uh, we're now making that content available to you as well as answers to some of the more common questions that they asked. We hope it's of assistance to you and you'll find that it is broken up into four parts. This is Spiritual Warfare Part 3. I'll tell you what I do. We'll get into real practical stuff. I needed to set a, a bit of a theological framework, world, flesh, devil, categories, buckets, schemes, how to defend yourself, how to train people, how to counsel them. Um, the big issue I want to hit here as we transition is uh, the doctrine of Christus Victor. I've got a whole sermon on this online. and uh, Christus Victor is the doctrine that Jesus Christ is our victor and he has conquered Satan and demons through the cross. But Satan and demons, uh, because of sin, we have welcomed them into our life and through Jesus' death and resurrection, Satan and demons have been defeated. I'll give you just a few verses. I've got a whole list on page five. These are ones that in your personal study you're going to want to keep on hand. You're going to want to familiarize yourself with. Colossians 1.13, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son that he loves. Colossians 2.13-15 is probably the most stunning text on this issue. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. There's a great truth. Having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and stood opposed to it, he took it away, nailing it to the cross, that Jesus takes away sin and Satan has no right to claim us. Uh, I can go on and on and on. 1 John 3, 8, He who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God, the Lord Jesus, appeared was to destroy the devil's work. I'll just do Hebrews 2 as well. Since children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity. God became a man, that's Jesus, so that by his death, there's the cross, he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Uh, the last few are just Psalms talking about how God is a shield, right? That Jesus takes away our sin and he is our shield. He defeats Satan and demons and he's the shield that behind which we have safety and protection from Satan and demons. Uh, that being said, I won't get into it more thoroughly. You can listen to the sermon online, Christus Victor, it's under the Christ on the Cross series. The notes are on there as well. But the big idea is that Jesus crushed Satan and demons at the cross and liberated uh, those of us who are Christian. What I do then before I meet with people, page six, uh, I give them a spiritual inventory. Before I meet, uh, meet with them, uh, or let's say I meet with someone and I wonder if they have demonic activity going on in their life, I'll give them a spiritual inventory, I send them home, and I tell them this, you know, Satan is a liar, John 4, uh, and we want to be free of those, and the re result is we need to speak the truth, walk in the light, and be honest. So I tell them, look, tell me everything, don't lie, don't miss anything. Sometimes people will say, well, uh, do I have to put everything? It's like, yeah, and whatever you don't want to tell me, that's probably the first thing I need to know. All right, if it's so dark that you can't tell anybody, well, that probably, you know, that's probably the big issue that we have to deal with to get you some help. So I'll give them this uh, spiritual inventory on page six. It's read Galatians 5, read Colossians 3, read Mark 7. Is there anything you've done or been done to you? Anything that's ongoing and chronic? I also go into have you done or had done to you bestiality, habitual lying, physical unhealth, chronic masturbation, lying, pornography, ongoing depression, suicidal thoughts, alcohol abuse, drug use, anger, blasphemy, violence, self-inflicted injury, that would include suicide attempt, rape, incest, eating disorders, mental illness, pedophilia, anything else. Uh, I go through all of these things. You've been involved in a cult? Have you been involved in a false religion? Do you have any supernatural experiences? Do you hear voices? Do you see apparitions? Do you have any clairvoyant powers? I want to know everything. I want to know everything. And I tell them, go home, take your time and answer all this. And if you're unwilling to just give me the truth, I can't help you because I need to get a snapshot. What are we dealing with? Okay, and in this, what I do not believe is that... Uh, I'll answer this question. This is the one question everybody has. Can a Christian be demon-possessed? And here's the problem. That's the wrong question. 
because that's not the language of your Bible. Some translations use the language of demon-possessed. The language is actually demonize. Now, can a Christian be demon-possessed? Well, technically, no, because we belong to Jesus and we're indwelt by the Holy Spirit and greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And Jesus says that we're in his hand and no one and nothing can take us from his hand. And John 8 says that neither height nor depth nor angels nor powers nor principalities nor, nor any other thing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. So no, ultimately a Christian can't be demon-possessed. Can a non-Christian be demon-possessed fully? And they are in the Bible. Jesus deals with many of them. You can, through your flesh and the world, so sort of open the proverbial door to your body and soul and heart and mind that you welcome evil spirits in. Some people have multiples. Jesus calls one guy legion because he's got many demons in him. Totally. Now, what about a Christian? That's what we're talking about moreover. First thing, the non-Christian needs Jesus. You can't do anything with a non-Christian. They need Jesus. Jesus says, even if you cast a demon out, if they don't have the Holy Spirit, seven more demons come. So if you're dealing with a non-Christian that's, you know, demonized, demon-possessed, you, you, you cast demons out of them, they're just going to get seven more demons. You're not helping anybody. They need to get saved. So you share the gospel and lead them to Christ first things first. Uh, second thing is, what about Christians? Can a Christian be demon-possessed? Not in terms of ownership. No, you belong to God, right? You belong to God. Does, some would say then, therefore, you know, Satan doesn't work on Christians. Well, sure he does. He attacked Jesus. I say, well, yeah, but he can't internally influence them. Well, yeah, he can. Jesus looks at Peter and says, get behind me what? Satan. In Acts chapter 5, there's a couple called Ananias and Sapphira. They were members of the church, believers. They were bringing their tithe after selling some land, and they withheld part of their, alleged, their, their pledged tithe. And Peter looks at them and says, Why has Satan so filled your heart? You've not lied to men, but to God the Holy Spirit. Why has Satan so filled your heart? Right at the center and core of who you are. Satan's working from there. The same language again in Ephesians. Don't be drunk with wine. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why are you filled in your heart with Satan? Christians can't be owned, possessed in terms of demons, but they can be externally oppressed, and this will be my most controversial statement, internally influenced. Not possessed, not controlled. I'll use a very uh, simple analogy, very controversial. Uh, there are huge books written warring over this. Some will argue, well, Satan can't have any access to a believer because God and Satan don't occupy the same space. I said, well, they did in the days of Job when Satan was allowed to go into the presence of God. In me, I have the flesh and my new nature. I have my depravity and the Holy Spirit. The world, God and Satan are at work there. Now, God is greater to be sure. And the only way I believe a believer is really opened up to the demonic is through sin and folly and lies and, and they, they open themselves up. Are they possessed? No. Are they internally influenced? Possibly. Possibly. For some. In the same way, I own my, I'll give you an analogy. I own my house. It's my house. No one has any right to live there. But let's say I invite over some just total losers, drug addicts, alcoholics, freeloaders, whatever, and I let them eat my food, hang out at my house, sleep in the couch, crash in the bedroom. I just let them live there. I don't kick them out. I don't do anything. Do they own the house? Do they possess the house? No. Do they have access to it? Well, yeah, I open the door. I let them in. Are they going to create havoc in my house? Yeah, they're going to ruin everything. 